Hey, what's up, everyone? It is time for our football update with Otis Kirk. And Otis, let's start things off talking about Logan Moss. He is a guy from DeWitt, committed to Arkansas as a preferred walk-on. What can you tell us about him? Well, I can tell you, six foot, two fifteen, uh, kid that uh, I saw play at the monster camp this summer. Well, well I saw him work out. He's got a four point oh grade point. In eight games this year, he had 94 tackles, 14 went for loss, two two interceptions, and four forced fumbles. He only played in eight games, Dale Terra, this year. Last year, as, as a junior, he spent more time also in the backfield on offense, but he hurt his ankle in the first game of the season for DeWitt this year, and so they were real cautious with him when he came back, and he was more important on defense, so they used him at linebacker mo almost exclusively till the Shiloh game his senior year they played shallow in the state playoffs and got beat up here but he did play some h back and tied in in that game but for the most part logan played linebacker and that's what he'll play at arkansas uh he is uh is a junior when he was healthy he had a 129 tackles and eight tackles for losses in more games than eight obviously but uh he's he, he as i say he's super smart and that's important at linebacker you know and as with most kids that come out as preferred walk-ons are usually either lacking height or speed or something. And he probably, but they can make up for a step of speed with their intelligence. And this kid can do that. Uh, his brother, I will add, uh, Will Moss is one of the top two, 2023 prospects in the state already has an offer to Kansas is an offensive lineman. And uh, I, I, he, he was at the camp too. Their dad is a great guy also. I mean, a very nice guy. I, I met him at the Combine and just good people over in DeWitt and Mosses are outstanding people. Arkansas did well. Rion Rhodes and we're going to talk about Jordan Hanna too, Tara. And I mean, these are two excellent pickups. Yeah, I mean, I know you're really excited about him. Jordan Hanna from Greenwood, linebacker. You've called him a steal. Why do you say that? Well, I'm going to be honest with you, and and I hate when people, every running back for a while was going to be the next Darren McFadden, every basketball player was going to be the next Sidney Moncrief <laughs> or Corliss Williams. I hate that, but but with that said, I'm going to do what I hate. Coming out of Greenwood, I really think Jordan may be ahead of where Grant was when he came out of Greenwood. Now, I'm not saying Jordan is going to be an All-American his fifth year here at Arkansas, but I am saying I really think – it's close, but I think Jordan may be a better, a little bit far, further ahead than where Grant was. I didn't, I'd be interested to see what Grant thought about that. You know, knowing Morgan competitiveness, he'd probably say no, but but no, I, I just think he's 6'2", 215. He won state championships down there. Those kids in Greenwood, be it Jordan Hanna, Morgan Hanna, Grant Morgan, uh, Drew Morgan, they know how to win. Connor mm -hmm. Nolan, you know, all of them, they know how to win, Tara. I mean, that's all they do at Greenwood is win. They start that program in, in the youth football and teach them all the way up to high school, that system. They use that system. And people talking about you need to do this or do that to compete. That's one you could take, they could go to Greenwood and take some notes from those people on how they do it. I'm serious. I used to cover Greenwood a lot when I was at the papers. And I went and I talked to them and, and they do, they start their, their football program in the youth ages and they use that system and they build all the way up teaching that system. And I'm telling you, they do it without a lot of division one prospects. You look, they don't have very many kids signed division one scholarships, but yet they win state championships every year uh jordan had 139 tackles you know two 11 went for loss uh three uh 13 sacks i'm sorry 13 sacks not three in two years he's had 100, 259 tackles 32 for loss and 22 sacks i'm telling you he, he is he played a lot of defensive end for greenwood and came off the edge he'd be more of an, a stand-up linebacker at arkansas but because of his size obviously but uh no i i think he was at the monster camp as well. You know, we talked about Logan being there. Jordan was at that monster camp as well. And I thought both of those kids showed up pretty well, uh, good that day. I, I like them both. I, I, I think, I think coach Rhodes really <laughs> helped himself in the room when you can add two kids that are walk-ons and are very intelligent. They produce on the football field. They come from good program. I, I think you've done well. And, and, I think both these kids got a chance. I really think Jordan Hanna's got a chance to, to surprise some people at Arkansas. I mean, really surprise some people. And, you know, and then Moss, same thing. Well, let's talk about Cade Renfro. He is a quarterback, going to walk on at Arkansas. Can you tell us about him and, and yeah. if can he help Arkansas? 
Well, you know, it's kind of a weird, this is a weird deal. He had 15 offers coming out of high school. He <laughs> signed with scholarships with Ole Miss, went there. He turned down Florida State, Kendall Browse, and some of those schools. He had 15 offers, I mean, legit offers coming out of Stephenville, Texas, which is a big-time school down in Texas. He went. He, uh, he passed for uh, 2,372 yards, uh, 17 touchdowns, 11 interceptions as a senior. Didn't play at Ole Miss this year. He redshirted. But, uh, well, you know, I mean, to get him as a walk-on, that goes back to what I was just saying, kind of about those linebackers. You get a kid that had 15 hoppers out of high school to come to your school as a walk-on, you've done pretty well for yourself. Now, he's I'll tell you about Katie, he's more of a pro style than like a dual threat, like Arkansas is kind of going to this dual threat deal. Mm -hmm. But there's a spot for him. And yeah, I think Kate in time can help him. I don't know how quickly he can help him, but yeah, I think in time, sure. I think I think he's got some things to offer. He's probably ahead of some of the other guys for passing out of high school. And Stephenville's a very good high school. I, I'd, they used to really dominate down there. I don't know how they've done lately so much, but they're, that's a good high school. And, and it, they produce a lot of good prospects. And Cade, like I he, he, uh, he, I think Coach Browse was obviously the connection here at Arkansas. But, yeah, I think he'll make a good impact. And I just – I get excited when, about getting walk-ons because I think these are guys that come. They have a purpose for coming, Tara. Yeah. I'm not saying the kids that get scholarships don't have a purpose. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying when you you have scholarship offers other places and you decide to come to Arkansas as a walk-off, I think it means that means the school means a lot to you, just like Grant Morgan. I mean, we could go down the list. I mean, Burlesworth, we could talk on and on about kids that came here mm -hmm. and walk on because it meant something to them. And I think – Really, once again, all three of these kids, I think, have a chance to eventually help Arkansas, all three of them. Well, Trey Holly is a running back. He's gotten a pair of SEC offers, one from Arkansas. Uh, where's his other offer from? He's got one from Purdue, one from Kansas, and one from Grambling. And Arkansas and LSU both offered him on Friday. I'm telling you, this kid is 2023, just a sophomore. Get this, 2,710 yards rushing, 44 touchdowns, Ooh. called 13 passes, uh, uh, and, and two touchdowns is, is, is receiving. Brought back eight kickoffs, had uh, one of those for a touchdown, returned a punt for a touchdown. I'm telling you. Trey Holly's 5'8", 180. He's not very big, but then again, he's just in the 10th grade. But I'm telling you, he is going to be a big, big time running back in college. Yeah. This kid, they went, they lost the ch state championship. They were undefeated until they got to the state championship game. And, and Madison, uh, Baton Rouge, a school out of Baton Rouge beat him. Uh, he, he, he's from Farmerville uh, Union uh, Academy, uh, Trey is, but mm -hmm. uh I think they got to the finals. They got they lost to a school out of Baton Rouge, but but otherwise they were undefeated. But I'm telling you, Trey Holly has got a chance. You know, he talked to Jimmy Smith, really impressed with Coach Smith. I think he's just he's got speed, he's tough, and you've got to be in there. He 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 wasn't that familiar with Arkansas this year. He said he didn't really watch any of the game, but he might be a Traylon Smith. Traylon Smith. That's who he reminds me of. You know, he's similar built. I looked up, I think Traylon's listed, I believe, at 5'9", 185, I believe, and on the roster is what they've got Smith listed at. But he's very similar in size. Uh, he's got a lot of speed. And, you know, anything that he lacks in size, and I don't know if the lack of height hurts you that much at running back because yeah. I think you get behind those big offensive linemen. I think it's hard for the defense to see. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think I don't see it. that's a disadvantage. Um, he can – he carried 280 times, so obviously he can take a pounding. And I yeah. know be, when he gets to college, there'll be bigger players yet. He might get that, but but I'm just telling you. I mean, I, he he he's he's he, size is not going to be a hindrance for him, and he's got a chance to grow some more. But uh, I don't know if Arkansas can get him. He grew up an LSU fan, but I'm pretty good friends with his cousin, and um, I think Arkansas is definitely going to be in the hunt there. But one thing that Trey did tell me yesterday when I talked to him on the phone. Even though he grew up an LSU fan, he's keeping an open mind in recruiting. It's kind of different. You know, when you're a kid and you're watching TV, you're from Louisiana, you watch LSU. Yeah. But when you get to be recruited, he said he wants to go where it feels like home. He wants to go where he's needed and wanted. It feels like where he's the most comfortable. So it yeah. may not be LSU, you know. And so that he's not a lock for LSU at all. So I think Arkansas has got a chance there. I really do. And recruiting he's not he said he's not going to make a commitment anytime soon so the recruiting is going to go on and on with him and i'm sure we'll be talking about him like we did cameron ball and, <laughs> and a bunch of 
kids on here, you know, many times over, but he is a, um, he's somebody definitely I really like. I like a lot. If you, if you haven't watched his tape, it's with my story yesterday on Pig Trail Nation Hogville. Mm -hmm. You can watch his the highlight tape. Watch that and watch him. You, you will be excited about it too, I promise you. Well, we got one more guy to talk about. I mean, Arkansas has just done a really good job of getting into Oklahoma for recruiting, and this is just another case of that Chris McClellan, uh, a D-line guy. He's got 13 offers now, one of them from yeah. Arkansas. 2022 defensive tackle, defensive end, can play either. He's 6'4", 275, can go inside or out. He's one of those kids that can do either in college. It depends on what – do you run a three-man front? Do you run a four-man front? Mm -hmm. Do you want him out on the edge? Do you want him inside? I think he probably – I think he's going to be an interior player, but that's just me. But, but I mean, that's up to the college that gets him. But, yeah, Arkansas, Oklahoma State, Baylor, you know, Kansas, Kansas State, Nebraska – He's, uh, you know, Oregon State, Indiana, you know, Indiana's getting noticed, and Ole Miss is another SEC school. Indiana's a school that's coming in, and we're starting to hear them. I'm starting to mention them a lot more in recruiting, Tara. Yeah. You never mentioned Indiana. It was always Kevin with basketball might mention Indiana. <laughs> McPherson probably mentioned them, but I never heard that in football. But they really, Coach Allen has made them competitive, and so they're in on him. But but uh, Arkansas is close to Tulsa. I think they've got a chance to get him because he was really – he's somebody that did pay attention to Arkansas this year a lot. He liked that they were competitive in the SEC. And he thinks Sam Pittman and Coach Odom and them guys, those guys have got him on the verge of being right back competing in the SEC year in, year out. And he liked that. They showed a lot of promise. He came to a camp here when Chad and those guys were here in 2019, the last year. There weren't no camps last mm -hmm. summer, obviously. He came to a school camp here at Arkansas and did well when he was uh, in 2019. So he's familiar with Arkansas. He's familiar with the facilities. He likes the new coaching staff. They've got a lot of ties to Oklahoma. Barry Odom and Sam Pittman, you know, are from Oklahoma. He likes both of those guys. So, you know, they're going to do a good job on him. And uh, at the end of the day, I think Arkansas has probably got about as good a chance as they want to get him. I, you know, Oklahoma State – is the in-state school that's offered him. I'm sure Tulsa will if they haven't. I don't think they have. I was looking at his list the other day. I ran the list in the paper or in the website. But anyway, he, he's um, he's the type you want to get because, like I said, he's a very versatile defensive lineman. They got Solomon Wright out of there last year from Vian, and Chris can continue that tradition of bringing kids from Oklahoma over here and playing on that defensive line for Coach LeBlanc and them, those guys. Well, Otis, I know you've written up a lot of great articles on all of the guys that we've talked about today. Yeah. So everyone watching, if you want to learn a little bit more about them, just head to our website. But Otis, that's going to wrap us up for today. Thanks so much for your time. I appreciate you. Thank you a lot. Have a good day.